Hello again, Aperture from Rogue Tactics here, and today I have a very special video about how to just build a Magical Musketeer deck. I've been seeing a lot of people ask a lot of questions about how to just build the deck and not what the cards do, so I figured I should have an entire video dedicated to showing how to put together the deck. This guide will cover all the basic cards that you can put in a musket deck, as well as the two variations in which to play it, which are Control and Utopia Double OTK. First, I'm going to be covering specifically musket cards, and then I'll move on to the more generic spells and traps or monsters that you can play. And then after that it'll be extra deck. So without further ado, here are the main deck musket monsters you should be playing. Let's start with the essential muskets. So first you have Magical Musketeer Casper, who is basically your main searcher of the deck. You should always play three of them. Whenever you play a spell trap behind him, he searches another musket card. Very good. Always at three. Next you have Magical Musketeer Starfire. You play something behind her and she specials a different musket from your deck in defense mode. Always play three. In all possible scenarios, they should be the ones you put down first. And most of the other muskets are arguably filler, because none of them are nearly as good as those two. Uh, the next musket is Magical Musketeer Kid Brave. You play something behind him. You can discard any musket card to draw two cards. He cycles, but while he doesn't give you, you know, raw advantage like Casper and Starfire do, he's the third best musket overall just to play down first and sometimes he'll draw you what you need to. You should basically always play at least two to three of him. Now we have the secondary musket cards. Starting with Magical Musketeer Doc, when you play a spell or trap behind Doc, it gives you a musket card from your graveyard. This is a really good effect, but it only works if there's actually something there in the first place, meaning he's really not a good turn one card. He's a really, really strong card after you've already done like your combo and broken a board, because if you have him and, let's say, Casper and some other hand cycling or drawing musket, you can create something called a Dock Lock, where Dock, Casper, and whatever other musket you have in play can infinitely reuse the cards in your graveyard in hand to use Cross Domination, Desperado, and one other musket card every single turn. It's an incredibly strong lock and wins most grind games against nearly every deck. It has a massive amount of disruption, and it's so consistent that most decks can't prepare for it. While Doc himself is a strong card, the limitations of not being able to play him down first compared to Casper and Starfire make you want to play him at 2 rather than 3. Next up we have Magical Musketeer Calamity. Now Calamity kind of suffers the same thing as Doc, as she's not really good as a turn 1 musket play because all she does is when you play a spell or trap behind her, she specials a musket in defense from your graveyard. And that implies you've already played a musket this turn. This designates her role in the deck more as a combo extender, or a rank 4 play machine. Don't get me wrong, she's a very strong card in her own, but her limitations, and really you only need to use her once, means you only really need one of her in the deck. Now for the third and final member of our secondary muskets, we have Magical Musketeer Wild. Now, Wild is when you play a spell trap behind him, he shuffles three musket cards back from your graveyard into your deck, and then you draw a card. He is essentially a true Draco Disciples for muskets, and while that does sound good, he suffers again the same fate as Doc or Calamity, where they're basically useless if you just play him down first, because they're not Casper, Starfire, or Kid Brave. He's more of a tech choice than anything. If you're playing a more disruption-oriented grind game build, the control build that is becoming popular right now. He's really good, because you can never deck out, he always gives you a card when you play something behind him, and he recycles all your one-ofs that you're playing. He also has the highest attack of any musket, which is still only at 17, but he's still pretty good for that. And he's a rank 4. Him, Casper, and Doc create the Doc Lock all together on the board, which is nearly impossible for most decks to break, because you generate infinite resources and reuse infinite cards from your graveyard. I'd recommend playing one of him, at least in the current meta, if you're playing the control build. But if you're playing the Utopia double OTK build, I probably wouldn't play him at all. Next for the non-main deck muskets, you have Magical Musket Mastermind Zakiel, who is a terrible card and you should never play him. You have to tribute summon him, unless you summon him with max. His effect only works during your opponent's end phase, and he has no positive effect by himself. This is our archetype's boss monster but it doesn't even qualify as a boss monster in the first place. You should never run this card. If you ever have the inclination of running this card, you should throw it away. 
this card is absolutely garbage, and unless there's some other card that comes out that protects muskets in some way, shape, or form, you draw basically the same number of cards with Kid Braver Wild with no downsides, unlike this card. So don't play this card. Moving on to the Magical Musketeer Spells and Traps, we have the guaranteed 3 ofs in every single deck, and that would be Magical Musketeer Cross Domination and Magical Musketeer Desperado. Cross Dom is just a free negate, it turns something to 0-0, zero, zero, and it's a quick play from your hand. It's one of the strongest spells in the game just on its own. It just does everything for the archetype. It's amazing, played at 3, it's a generic negate. There is basically no reason not to play this card at 3, and every time you see this card in your starting hand, you will be happy. The same thing can be said for Desperado, which is just popping a face-up card. It's also a quick play, it pops a face-up card, it's amazing, it does everything. Play it at 3, there is no reason not to play it at anything other than 3. This and Cross Dom together are insane, and what you loop with Doc and Casper all the time. Again, play 3 of both of these so you have a very high chance of opening with them. Because if you open with these, it's just a free pop and negate most of the time. Now going to the more, well, less used musket cards. You have Magical Musket, Crooked Crown. You play this card at 1 because really all it is is a combo extender. It is once per turn you can special a Magical Musketeer from your hand anywhere on the board, and then it locks the corresponding zone on the other side of the field. Weird effect. It's mostly used just to summon more muskets from your hand, but sometimes it can be used to disrupt. Like let's say your opponent has a link mouse that points straight down, you can just lock that zone. It's really rare that that happens, but playing this at 1 and just searching it and then summoning another musket with it is basically its only use in the deck. So do play it at 1. Next you have Magical Musket Dancing Needle. It's a triple DD Crow. It's a really good card, but it's not like a disruption card when you go second. It's not a board breaking card. It's a really really good card to search after you've already broken a board, and that's why you should play it at 1. Unless the meta becomes entirely graveyard oriented, there's really no reason to play this card at more than 1. And for the final main deck musket trap, we have Magical Musket Last Stand. Now, Last Stand is in this weird spot where it's a really, really strong card. It's if you control a Magical Musketeer, you can negate the activation of a spell or trap, and then destroy it. Sounds good, right? But Magical Musketeers right now are used to break boards, and most people set up a board with almost only monster effects. And if they do have spells and traps, they're Solemns, of which this card doesn't stop because they negate the summon of the musket, so you can't respond with this card. If there was a ton more, like, reactionary spells or traps, you'd play more of these? Like, in the mirror, this card's amazing, but, like, that's not gonna happen that often. So, in the current meta, I'd advise to only play one, but if you're really, really liking the card, you can go up to two. But playing this card at, like, more than one, there's a very, very large chance that you'll open it with your opening hand against, like, a full spiral board, and it'll just be dead and sit there for the game. Like, it's a really dead card when it's dead. It's arguably the most dead musket card when you draw it, because it is literally unusable until your opponent uses something. Now, here are the unfortunate losers of the Magical Musketeer spells and traps. Now we have Magical Musket Steady Hands. All this does is it doubles the attack and defense of a musket. That's all it does. It doesn't progress the game state at all. It's only until the end of the turn. And Magical Musketeers have so small attack that sometimes the doubling isn't even enough to do anything. This is a terrible card. You should never play it. There are far better options to play instead of this if you ever consider this card. Always play this card at zero. Never anything more. Ever. On the contrary, now we have Magical Musket Fiendish Deal. And this card is actually a good card. It's just that there's nothing really in the meta currently that makes you want to run this. What this card does is it prevents your Musketeers from being popped by card effects. And if this card is sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card effect, you get a search of any musket card. Like, oh my god, that sounds amazing, right? No one's going to pop this card, because they're not going to give you the benefits of the card. And most effects right now, they don't pop. They like send, they banish, they do all these weird effects. And the large majority of the time, this card will just be dead in your hand, and doesn't really do that much. One of the only like noteworthy cards that this is good against is Spiral Sleeper, but there's lots of other cards that do the same thing, but like better. Like, would you rather have non-poppable muskets 
or draw a Dark Ruler. Like, there's a big, big, big difference in power when it comes to cards like these. Currently, I'd play it at zero, but if the meta changes to more destruction-oriented, you can play it at one. Well, that's it for the main deck musket cards, so let's throw some hand traps in the mix here. Now, hand traps are okay to use in muskets, it's just that they aren't spells and traps, so you can't gain advantage off of them if you draw into them at all. And most of them are focused around the double or nothing OTK strat, so it's okay. You can play them. I'm not a big fan, but you can definitely play them. You can play 0 or 3 Ash Blossoms, it's a good staple card. And if you're playing the Utopia Double variant, you play 3 Phantasmes. Nothing else needs to be said, these cards are strong, especially in that build, but they're not so good in the control build. Next up we have the power cards. First you got Pot of Desires. You should either play 0 or 3 of these. Uh, in the control build, it's iffy. I personally enjoy 0 in the control build because you play so many 1-ofs that banishing one of them kind of screws up your gameplay. But if you're not playing that many 1-ofs, play 3. Dark Ruler No More. It's, it's ridiculously strong. We're a hard go second archetype, so we can main deck this card. And it gets over like 90% of the boards nowadays. And especially when Master Rule 5 is coming up, you can literally just slap this down and steamroll someone. Then you have Mystic Mine. Mystic Mine is broken right now. Uh, Mystic Mine is like playing another three Dark Rulers in your deck. And because Muskets basically only normal summon once and only use one monster per turn, and we have multiple ways of removing it. Play it set three. You will heavily, heavily enjoy it. And then we have Mind Control. If it was at 3, we'd be playing 3. It's just a generic take a monster that you can play behind a musket to trigger that effect too. It's insane. Play it at its maximum, which right now is 2. Next we have some generic combo extenders. Basically every deck that can afford to play Instant Fusion should play Instant Fusion. The only downside of it being once per turn, it's not really a downside, and we have extra deck space to spare. So you should almost always play 2-3 to three of these. Play Upstart at 1. Upstarts are free draw 1 in most other decks, in muskets it's a draw 2 or possibly a draw 3. If it was at 3, you'd play 3. It's amazing in muskets, so play it. You should play 0 to 1 Reasonings. Reasoning is a weird card, because you think it would be bad, because we only play 2 different levels in our deck, but the positives of setting up like another musket just randomly, especially if your opponent doesn't know what they're playing against and just says like 4 or 5 or 6 and guess wrong, you get a free musket on board. Also, if you play it behind like Doc, Calamity, all those other cards, even if they like hit the correct number, it still triggers and you get it. So that's kind of cool. You should play 0 to 1 Monster of Borns. It's a very strong card, but it does nothing to break boards. A lot of people aren't dumping any good monsters into the graveyard, and the main downside of muskets right now is you have to draw a musket out of those six first cards you hit, otherwise you lose. It's Either Reasoning or Monster of Born in a lot of cases, you can play both, but like the deck does run out of space at some points. It's a very strong card, and you can make your own decision about that. And then if you're playing Mystic Mine or any other field spell, play your one Terraforming. It's a good card. Now on to some tech choices. You can play Super Poly, it's really meta dependent. I probably wouldn't play it right now, but if the meta ever becomes, you know, Super Polyable, play 3. It's a strong card but it's super meta-reliant. Uh, Forbidden Chalice, which is just a generic negate, either 0 or 3. If you're playing the control build of muskets, this card's insane. It's an extra cross dom. Uh, it's not once per turn. It's a quick play. It's super useful. And then in contrast to Chalice, you have Offerings to the Doomed, which is target a face-up monster in the field, blow it up, and then you skip your next draw phase, which isn't really a big downside. It's just right now a lot of things have immunity to destruction, immunity to targeting, all these other positive effects, which make it not as good as it should be. But if that ever goes away, we're one of the few decks that can abuse this because we still plus off of it because we can play it behind a musket. Currently, I'd recommend playing zero of these. But again, if the meta shifts, play it at three. Now we finally hit the extra deck. First, I'm just gonna cover the super poly targets, which would be Earth Golem at Ignister, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, World Chalice, Guard Dragon, Almaduke, and then you have Mud Dragon, but he's going to be covered in the Instant Fusion targets. These are just all the generic Super Poly targets. If you're playing Super Poly, you should be running them in your extra deck, and depending on the meta, you can take out like World Chalice, Guard Dragon, but the other three are ridiculously good if you're running Super Poly. Now onto the Instant Fusion targets. 
You have Thousand Eyes, Millennium Eyes, and Mud Dragon. All of these are good, all of these are generic, all of them do something. And Mud Dragon specifically is a level 4, so you can go into rank 4 plays. And his no targeting effect is pretty good in Musket sometimes, because you can just call light and every single monster we have is light. Overall, I'd 100% recommend playing 1000 Eyes and 1 Millennium Eyes. And Mud Dragon is more of a tech choice right now, where he's not needed. But he's still a useful card, so you can make your decision about that. Now, in preparation of Master Rule 5, we have our Xyz section, which would be Abyss Dweller, number 60, and the Utopia Double Package. Now, Abyss Dweller gives this deck Graveyard Negation, which is one of the only things it lacks. So, breaking a board, putting two muskets on top of each other and making Abyss Dweller, gives us some generic negation that lets us live another turn and sometimes just wins the game from that. Abyss Dweller's always been a strong card, so I highly recommend playing one of them in the extra. Number 60 is this weird card where you can draw cards, you can double the attack of a monster, you can special a monster from the graveyard. It's kind of slept on, but it's an incredibly strong card, and I highly recommend playing one of them, at the very least, because let's say your board gets blown up, or you need a specific musket from the graveyard you have no access to, or even reviving like a Thousand Eyes or a Millennium Eyes. You can just do that. He's hard to learn how to use and when you should use him in this deck, but once you learn how to do that, he's a very helpful card. So do play him at 1. And lastly, we have the Utopia package. Uh, this consists of Utopia, Utopia Double, and Double or Nothing the spell card. Now, this combo's clunky, and I don't think it has much success in the current meta, but if you really, really just want to OTK someone, Swing at them with a 10,000 beater is pretty good, so you can play this, and you can make it off any two level 4s, so it's really easy to make in this deck. Overall, I probably wouldn't play the package right now, but if we lose a lot of the, you know, untargetable, unattackable, all this really really strong boss monster effects we have right now, I'd probably go back to playing it. But right now we have to reduce as much of the brickiness this archetype has as possible. Starting off our Link 1s, we have Link Karibo and Magical Musketeer Max. Link Karibo is for Thousand Eyes, Millennium Eyes, and if you play against Dinos, it eats the Lost World token. Magical Musketeer Max is Max. Play him at 3. He is essentially your best monster, and he's arguably the best Link 1 in the game. For the Link 2s, you have Security Dragon, Nightmare Cerberus, and Nightmare Phoenix. You should basically be playing one of all of these, because what these are are generic Link 2s that point up that have effects that trigger when they're co-linked with something pointing down, which is Magical Musketeer Max, and all their effects are very good. Security Dragon bounces a monster, uh, Nightmare Cerberus pops a monster and draws a card, and Phoenix pops a back row and draws a card. They're all good, they're all generic, and they let you Link Climb into bigger things while you're disrupting the board, so always play one of these at least. For the Link 3s, we have Nightmare Unicorn, Ningirsu the World Chalice Warrior, and Topologic Trispinia. Nightmare Unicorn is a good card, it's just that we don't really have any Link 1s that point up, so you can never get the draw effect. If you wanted the spin effect, Ningirsu does it better, but there's occasions in which you want to use Unicorn to put something back into the deck. I play it at 0 right now, or 1 really, it's just a personal preference. Ningirsu right now is arguably our best extra deck monster. It outs anything untargetable, it outs anything really, and because he's generic, well, two Link monsters generic. It's really easy to make him off of like one Magical Musketeer Max and like a Nightmare Cerberus or Phoenix. His only downside is in point down, but that's what the Link 4s are really used for. And you have Topologic Trispania, which is more of an anti-back row card right now. You can play it if you're fighting a lot of back row, because it gets rid of all of it. But if you're not playing against back row, you shouldn't play it. Again, a personal preference. The only one of these three that you should run 100% of the time is Ningirsu, because he is so strong in this deck. Now for the boss monsters, we have Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax, Appalooza, Bow the Goddess, and Unchained Abomination. Basically, you need a boss monster in this archetype because we don't have one, and you pick one of these and you roll with it. Avermax is more for protecting the muskets that are already in the field, and he's really easy to make. You can mind control something and just kind of make Avermax raw. He's an overall good card. But he doesn't really have any disruption effects, he's more of a defensive card rather than an offensive card. The same can be said with Appalooza, incredibly easy to make, very very strong effect, but a lot of the time people just can't get over her because you can really only make her with two things, giving her only 1600 attack. While not bad isn't always good. The 
one that I prefer the most is Unchained Abomination, because if you have a Desperado in hand, or are able to pop something with him on the board, he just pops something else, and you get like 3 to 4 pops every turn with him, and that's incredibly disruptive. He's also one of the only things that you can make with Ningirsu, because Ningirsu doesn't point down, so any musket plus Ningirsu makes him. Very very easy to make, he outs your own Ningirsu if you get stuck and can't make another max. And overall a very very disruptive card. He also has a big attack of 3k, and he just gets over things sometimes. Unchained Abomination is also especially strong in any Mystic Mind variant, because he's a big boss monster, when anything else pops he pops something, and if they pop Mystic Mind he pops something. If they wait for the end of the turn and you both have a monster and Mystic Mind pops, he gets a pop for the Mystic Mind pop, and then a pop at the end phase. He just has so much disruption built in, people aren't prepared for it all the time. And generic disruption is kind of ill-prepared for in the first place. So having three pops on a stick every turn, very, very strong. Well, that about covers it for how to make a Magical Musketeer deck. I've covered all the main deck monsters, all the main deck spells and traps, all the tech choices I think are applicable right now in the current meta, and all the extra deck monsters I think you can run. Now, I specifically omitted Evenly Matched right now, because it's in this weird spot of either main deck or side deck, no one really knows because the meta is shifting, so I'm going to have an entire video on that later. But until then, feel free to comment on the video, I'll answer, and see you next time.